Hey guys, Jeremy here with Living in the Past. So we have a Patreon channel and every month we release a podcast called What You Talking About for our patrons. About a year ago, we did a special episode of What You Talking About on Friday the 13th. Uh, the movies, uh, the, the content we were doing specifically part four for our main show uh the, and you can find it uh on this channel but this was an additional conversation that we released for our patrons um and it really just covers the series why we find it interesting important and funny uh and weird and all that stuff but we also just talk through our favorite moments from friday the 13th uh, if you're interested in what we do on patreon you can find it in our the description for this video uh, but we just thought this would be a cool thing to do on Halloween, just kind of release it out to just our subscribers on YouTube. So here it is for you. It's about 20 minutes long. We hope you enjoy the conversation. See you guys. So we got we got Friday the 13th coming up. Um, the part four is what we're going to do the main show on. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about, about Friday the 13th. I have a unique relationship with it, as does probably every teenage boy from the 1980s. Um <laughs> Was Friday the 13th part of your upbringing? Was it something that was the forbidden fruit that you were always trying to watch? Or was it totally not on the radar? Like, what is your relationship to that series? Uh, Carl, I'd love to start with you. Like, what's your relationship to Friday the 13th? Was it ever a thing for you? And, and just kind of what do you think about it? Well, um, no, you know, another surprising, shocking fact about me is I was, I'm kind of a coward. So, you know, I know looking at me, you think no way, but, um, you know, I was not a fan of horror, you know, yeah. I remember, okay, just to, this is just confession time. I think I, there was an episode of fantasy Island when I was like a young <laughs> elementary oh my gosh. junior high. I don't know how old I was. Yeah. And some woman on the show, you know, and that show is, it's nothing. It's, it's nothing, Jeremy, yeah. Devin, it's not scary at all. Um, some woman looks in the mirror and she's just, she's like horribly, you know, the mirror reflection is some horrible monstrous looking. It's not her, not her real looking. Yeah. She's shocked by it. I like ran out of the living room crying to my bedroom. You know, I'm not wow. coming out of my bedroom. You know, wow. that's how freaked out I got about stuff. Yeah. So as I got into teenage years, my friends were into, I had plenty of friends into horror movies and Friday the yeah. 13th. And it's the kind of stuff you talked about, you know, um, and they were, about how I guess cutting edge it was to a degree and how scary it was. And you never seen this stuff before. I wanted no part of it. So uh, I guess as I got older, uh, I was like, it was almost like a rite of passage a dare. It's like, am I tough enough to watch it? So as I got into later teenage years, I probably came in to Friday the 13th about three or four. Um, yeah. but I was not big on it to start with. And it's just not a genre that I love to, I like more suspenseful horror movies, not just right. straight up gore and, and hacking and slashing. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I do have a relationship with it. It's just more of a, can am I brave enough to watch this thing? Can I sit through right. it? And so I got to that, you know, it was a rite of passage. I'm a man now. Cause I saw that movie. So. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Carl. Oh Congrats. my yes. gosh. It's a shocking oh news to everybody, gosh. but I am. <laughs> Devin, uh, Friday Thirteenth. What's what's that relationship like? For love, you? love, love. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I guess from like, uh, I, I love the lore of yeah. Friday the Thirteenth. It's not so much like the slasher things that I, I like. Um, yeah. Obviously, that's super formulaic as well. Um, yeah. it, it's kind of giveaways every time you hear the uh, the, the famous ch 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 yeah come come into play, um, but. I, I absolutely love kind of the, the lore and mythology of Camp Crystal Lake. And I, I uh, maybe I should save this for when we break it down. But there, I think my my pick for favorite Friday the 13th film might surprise some of our listeners. So I'll, I'll save that. But love it. And I will also say this for those of you that video game, Friday the 13th video game, pretty, yeah. uh, pretty gnarly. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, I've, I've seen it. I've never... I've seen people play it. I've never, I've yeah. never um, played it myself. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I have it it's actually Friday the 13th part 2 is the first rated R movie I saw. Whoa. Um, mm. Saw it in 1982. I was in Wow. second grade. Um maybe third grade, Ooh. second grade. So um yeah, I, I saw it I, I saw it like half with my face covered, you know, and and uh <laughs> um 
it was one of those uh, Carl in some ways I have there's similarities like sometimes I would just I couldn't watch it I I, I just mm-hmm. like I can't it bothers me you know and other mm-hmm. times I, I totally could um I think we're doing part four that's my personal favorite I'll go ahead and throw that out there but um mm-hmm. part four is also really funny and, and it just has some like hysterical moments I think the original does too. The original Friday Thirteenth mm-hmm. has some pretty funny moments in it, um, and, and so I, it was always this weird thing. I would go through phases with it, where I would watch them and be okay with it, and other times I'd be like, "No, nah, I, I don't really want to do this," you know. Yeah. Um, I do, Devin. I do understand that feeling though, the lore of it, and mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. some of the connective tissue through it, and some of the reoccurring characters. And uh, I kind of like that stuff, too. I, I do yeah. like the – I've always wrestled with, and I've kind of flip-flopped throughout my life on, is this good for me to watch? Is this not good for me to watch? What mm-hmm. is a movie like this saying? Is it saying anything at all? Like, wh- is there yeah. anything of value? And, you know, I've I've really – kind of been on that roller coaster or that that pendulum where i've swung back and forth just like in how i watched it and i i do feel like it is saying something about women and women's roles in society i know that sounds crazy but but i do think um you know the final girl concept that we mm-hmm. see in that that horror it, it might be saying something about women's capabilities in a world mm. that mm. has evil in it Mm. And I know I was watching the documentary on it and that was brought up a few times. And I found that very fascinating because the critique is it's abhorrent and just terrible. And it is at times. (laughs) That's what makes it so crazy is it it has there's some substance to it. But then it's just complete garbage at times. And that makes it sort of funny, but sad. And and so I have this really it's funny. I have this very complicated relationship with specifically the Friday the 13th movies. And, wow. and there are times where I, I really like it. Other times I'm like, this is garbage and trash. And, and I, I go back and forth and back and forth on it. So I'm excited to do part four just because I think it's, it, in my personal opinion, it's, it's my favorite. I think it is the best. Although I think you can make a strong argument for the original as being probably probably the best in the series. But um we could probably have those conversations. I don't know what your favorite is, Devin, but um, we could probably have, you know, what is the best Friday the 13th in the series. Right. right. Uh, um, for you, for you guys, um, why do you, why do you think this thing is endured though? Like, why is it still, I know the last time we saw Friday the 13th movie, I think it was 2009. Um, I, I, there must be some sort of like politics in the studios that's keeping it from the cinema because it seems like a, a surefire, you know, hit in terms of just low budget horror film that makes some money. So it hasn't been around recently, but it's still in the cultural like zeitgeist. I mean, people still talk about it. It, you know, we're in the month of Halloween. It's showing up on TV, uh, on TBS, on, on uh, TNT and, and, you know, even the, the HBOs and all that stuff. Why, like, why do you guys think this thing is endured? And and Devin, I'll throw it to you. I'm just curious, like, what is it about this? Yeah, I think it is the lore, right? I think right. there are plenty of films to turn to if we want to get spooked. Uh, but but I think if one of the things that Friday the 13th did so well was give us a bit of a backstory. Before we're even introduced to who Jason is, yeah. the, the first film does a great job of the backstory. Whereas I think that a lot of films that are a part of this genre don't get that right. Right. Um, may, maybe because it's just a single film, maybe because it's not something that they want to explore. But I think that one of the things that keeps folks coming back to Friday the 13th is the fact that it, it's got this lore. We there, There's rationale. We have an understanding of why Jason does what he does, right? Yeah. And I think yeah. that that is similar to Freddy Krueger. I, I think right. those are the things that, that keep folks going back to that. And then I think that there's this, this weird part of us as humans that we... <laughs> We we kind of want to identify with both Jason and Freddie from the perspective of they were wronged, right? Like they were both mm-hmm. wronged, and yeah. though that doesn't necessarily like justify what they're justify. doing, I think that there's an inherent part of we humans in the real world that 
understand like, oh, if who amongst us hasn't been wronged at some point and wanted some form of revenge? I'm not talking about grabbing a machete and hacking people <laughs> up, but I think all of us can identify with being severely hurt and, yeah. and wanting to take out our frustrations on those that have harmed us. Yeah. yeah. Carl, what do you think? I agree with everything Devin said with that. Um, I guess I'll y'all can maybe swing back to a question I have about the lore too. Is y'all I do like the lore. I think my frustration and maybe y'all like it is the open endedness of like, okay, exactly what is it about Jason that he can keep get, being resurrected? I mean, what is the mechanics mm. of that? So <laughs> and I think yeah. there's always been a different you know, there seems like so many different writers, producers, whatever, directors right. of the films that it's like it seems to be they have their own sort of take on why he's able to come back. But, you know, it, the lore, I would, you know, some people like a mystery. I know you guys talk about like a mystery. I like maybe a little more explanation, even though it would be right. made up and fantastical. Just why is it, he? what about his body, his person? Why is he able to come back so much? But, yeah. but yeah. why does it, why does the movie kind of resonate still? I think part of it too is, you know, you think about a lot of horror, especially earlier uh, decades might have been, you know, you, you got Frankenstein, you got Dracula, you got the mummy, you have all those classic uh, monsters, and it's like werewolf, it's things like we're they're scary to think about, but we don't really mm. think that's going to happen in the real world. And I remember, mm. you know, being a teenager, and we all, at some point, you know, if you ever went to a camp like Crystal Lake, like I went to several camps with church groups and things during summers, and, you know, we'd always be walking around at night with a flashlight, and somebody would turn it off and start going, you know, you know, the, you know, what's that? What's that? And so. It's one of those things, it's like, okay, maybe it's not a, a indestructible person that uh, has been dead several times and keeps coming back, but there could be something out here in the, you know, that that's a more realistic, uh, could there be a crazy person with some sort of weapon and, and be out here in the dark, and we don't know it, and if we ever get isolated, we could be killed. So it's like one of those things that we try to, you try to scare each other with when you are out in the woods, uh, that sort of thing. So I think that sort of resonates because it, to a degree, has a realism that you're like, well, I don't want that circumstance to happen to me. I'm not worried about werewolves mm. coming out tonight or vampires. I'm really not worried about those. Yeah. But is is there a homicidal maniac out there that's been, <laughs> you know, yeah. on the run, hiding out in the woods? Possibly. Yeah. So, you know, I think <laughs> yeah. that's part of the reason we yeah. can sort of relate to it. Everybody can relate to it. Yeah. Horror is fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, go ahead, Devin. What were you, what were you going to say? Oh, no, I was just going to say, just like going back to, you know, what what we talked about when we were breaking down the Lost Boys. I mean, literally growing yeah. up a, across the, the street from <laughs> where a serial right. killer was on the run from police and stuff like that. Right. I totally agree with Carl. I was like, yeah, actually, there's some truth to that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think there's this appeal to films like this. I, I I guess what I'm trying to say is, is, is horror is a little more complex than I think a lot of people think. It is, mm. I think, psychologically yeah. complex. Not necessarily the films themselves, but why people gravitate to them. Um, mm. Just mm. on Twitter alone, just with our Living in the Past account, we interact with so many horror-specific um, Twitter accounts that just love horror. And mm. one of the like strains I've noticed just in the, the conversations is, like, the world is evil, but... And it's hor- horrific at times. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, these horror films is a controlled space where I can deal with evil and potentially watch a character overcome it. Mm-hmm. And there's some sort of odd psychological attraction to that, like um, dealing with the evil, seeing like the final girl overcome the evil yeah. um, and, and feeling some sort of empowerment by that and feeling scared. Uh, but it's in a controlled space. Uh, I find that stuff endlessly fascinating. And I'm sure we'll talk about it more on the Friday the 13th Part 4 episode coming up uh, in about a week. Uh, but that that's intriguing to me, and I wonder wonder how much that role really how much of a role that really does play in people's love of the series. Um, for you guys, is there a, a memorable? And, and we'll kind of close out what you're talking about show with this. Is there is there a memorable moment? I, I'm not necessarily talking a kill because a lot of people go think that way about the Friday the 13th series, but, but is there a memorable moment, sequence, scene, story thread from Friday the 13th that just kind of stays with you? Um, it could be ridiculous and stupid or like, is there something from it that 
uh, kind of remains with you. And, and Devin, I'll, I'll start with you. Is there anything yeah. from the series? Yeah, I mean, there's several things. I, I, yeah. I think that, you know, and, and this is kind of springboarding from what, what Carl brought up. I think that most of us have some type of summer camp experience. Yeah. All of us were horny teenagers. Yeah. Um, and and I <laughs> thank you for affirming that, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah um, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> Um, and, and so, yes, I mean, there, there's definitely part of that that kind of like plays on on the psyche of the viewers. But for me, yeah, for in with regards to the, the Friday the 13th, I think there are two things that stick out that one um, that the I, I forget which one it is. Um, I, I need to go back and rewatch it. But there's there's one I want to say it would maybe it was number four. I don't know. Maybe it was number two. Anyway, um, there's there's. A, a young man and young woman walking through a house that's dark and she says I think there's someone else in here and like to this day that still gets me it's hard to walk through a dark uh, <laughs> house without thinking of that like, yeah. Rrr, rrr, rrr. yeah um but far and away for me is is the the ending of the original and if mm. you haven't seen that I'm not going to make that into a spoiler right now but the the ending of the original I think it's that linchpin that brings yeah. The entire series together yeah mm -hmm. i would agree carl any anything for you any memorable moments yeah i mean you know i don't exactly know why maybe what you were talking about earlier jeremy but it's just like i remember the first one i did watch and i think i was like somebody had rented it and we were at somebody's house watching yeah. it so yeah. it's one of those things again i had to i couldn't back down like i'm gonna watch it so <laughs> it was more i was sort of forced into it <laughs> like, you're a chicken but um <laughs> you know there was one scene I think it was around, I think it was number four, I mean, or three, I'm not sure. Somebody's, you know, there's a guy and a girl, and they're fighting Jason in a barn. Like, they get kind of cornered in a barn, and the guy ends up uh, trying to, you know, I guess maybe, I mean, he's trying to kill Jason, but for the most part, he's just buying time for the girl to get away. And right. so, most of the kills seem to be, like, it's instantaneous, you know, he just right, comes in, right. whack, you're dead, people, and this one guy was putting up a fight, and he was getting stabbed, he was getting hacked with a machete, yeah. I think, and he just kept fighting, though, you know, it was yeah. like, you know, you'd feel, you'd hear the squishy noises, the, the yeah. noise of, you know, metal hitting bone, you'd hear him grunting yeah. and stuff, and it's like, that's horrible, but it's like, yeah. oh, he's putting up a fight, though, at least he's not just, yeah. you know, just taking it, it's like, I, he'd given up, so... I don't know. That one just kind of stuck with me as far as like, you know, you know, sometimes things may be overwhelming, but you just sort of, you just fight, you know, you don't just give up and maybe it's right. not going to save you, but it, it'll help somebody else maybe. So yeah, I think that's nice. what's appealing sometimes. I think, I think mm -hmm. that's, I think my favorite moments through all the series is when the character or characters kind of come to a full realization of what's happening. Their mm -hmm. circumstances mm -hmm. are dire. And then there is a, kind of a courageous stand made and, and normally it's the mm. final girl that does it, but sometimes it's mm -hmm. her love interest that will also step into that, that, that kind of like that breach and like, you know, I'm going to fight too. And, and I've always mm -hmm. liked that stuff. I, I think I had a friend that really loved part six. I think it's six. It might be seven. It's the one where the girl can like you, she has powers like, like mm. she telekinesis and stuff. Like she can move things and, uh, when she starts fighting Jason, I, I always was uh, I laughed at that, but I had a buddy that loved it and thought that was the best, the best Friday the Thirteenth. That I was like, I don't know about that, but but it was that idea <laughs> of fighting back, and and I yeah. think that always resonates um, in the face of evil. I think that that's something mm -hmm. that that's weird about the series because it's so silly and dumb and just like these moronic. Yeah. Like the, I was watching the documentary about it. And uh, one of the filmmakers was like, you want the teenagers to be stupid, but there's this odd line you're always writing where it's not complete, total, moronic, like this. It's it's completely unrealistic. There's this edge you walk, get up to where it's writing that line of just like, this person's an idiot. But then, <laughs> um, but, th but it's not it doesn't completely take you out of the film. And, and I know yeah. that that's what Friday 13 does so well. And almost all the movies is just ride that line. And it, it kind of makes me laugh. And, and sometimes for me, that's, that's the appeal is just the, just the stupidity of it all. Um, but I think there's more going on to it than, than, um, 
I think a first glance at that series. Wow. I think there's we're there's some meta. things we're talking about. Yeah, Whoa. why not? Whoa. Why not? Whoa. We're living Raising in the, past. the bar, Jeremy. I'm not sure how comfortable <laughs> I am with that. <laughs> Well, let's wrap it up. Our next episode is Friday the 13th, uh, part four. Uh, we'll be covering that as we march into the month of October a little bit further. Um, patrons, thank you so much for, for your support and just uh, just uh, being along for the ride. Uh, yeah, let us know what you think about the Van Damme moments. Uh, what's the what, what did we miss or, or what did you agree with? And, and let us know about Friday the 13th. Have you seen them all? What... what um, you know what why is it endured and and what's memorable from it and uh we can't wait to get together to do to do part four we'll try to talk um carl into being there with us i don't know though he might be too scared might be too too scared scared. wow (laughs) wow Uh, all right thanks patrons we'll see it we'll be talking to you soon